Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Augustus the Animator, and today you'll be learning how to do this cute little firework, which can be found in the game Cover of Darkness, the game that I just completed with my brother Al, live now on congregate.com, shameless plug. Uh, we'd love if you would go play, go right at right after this tutorial, there's a link below in the description. But we'll just get right to this firework using trim paths and repeater and keyframing some color. All right, let's get to it. So you have your composition. I am in a 1024 by 1024, 30 frames a second composition, but do whatever you please. We're gonna start by using the pen tool to uh, make a line from the bottom up to the middle. And we are going to call this the launch, where it you know, launches up into the sky. Let's twirl down, twirl down under contents, under shape. And let's do, let's keyframe the color first. So under stroke, we're going to keyframe this color a few frames in because it's what I want, not immediately. So let's do that. We'll move it forward one more maybe. And then go back to the beginning and make it white. So it's like burning white hot right away. And then we'll go forward to about a second and make it a really deep pinkish red color as it is in Cover of Darkness. And now you'll get that um, transition between colors. All right. Now let us add some trim paths to this. Twirl that down. This will be the end of it here. So let's crank these both to 100, make a keyframe. Go all the way back um, to the first frame and uh, crank, crank those down to zero. So, and we won't, won't be able to see anything until we move these start keyframes forward in time a little bit. There we go. That'll look more natural once we grab these two. Hit F9 on your keyboard. Go to the graph editor. Hit the double wave button and slide these bad boys over to 100% so that they shoot up pretty quickly. Wonderful. So we'll do that, and that's pretty much good. We're going to cut this guy off with Alt right bracket, and we are actually going to duplicate him because we'll be using the same basic structure for the burst of the firework. So we'll call this burst one, and let's see, we are going to shorten, let's see, change the position of this. We'll move him up so that the center is or the start is um, pretty much at the center. And then with the G key, grab this point, move him down. And now we have a burst. Let's hit U on this to bring down our keyframes. I want all this to happen a little bit faster with this, with this burst. So that's a little faster. Great. Cut this off. And let's go twirl this down and add a repeater. Okay, the default is to add two copies and have them 100 pixels to the right of each other. We don't want that, so let's twirl down repeater. Copies, I like to work in odd numbers, usually for radial things. I'm just going to go with 9. And then we're going to click on the transform of the repeater. Um, this is at 100 right now for the x value for position. We don't want that, it's just default. And for rotation, we are going to do... Since we have nine copies, we're going to do 360 degrees, which is a full circle, divided by nine, which equals 40, which maybe you did in your head. I didn't want to do it because After Effects will do the math for you. So now let's, let's see. The anchor point of this is incorrect, and we need to adjust that. So what we're going to do is, under the transform of the repeater, find the anchor point and crank him down because we want the anchor point to basically be here. And let's see, I want it to be the center of my composition and half of 1024 is 512 so I'm going to type that in for the anchor. And then what I'm going to do is select that um, point and then also select this and shift this over and that'll kind of straighten out this circle and make it a bit more perfect. And let's see, I'm going to move, I think I'm going to move this up. 
so that it's in the center of all this. And then if we scroll back, we can see that it looks like it's all coming from one point, which is nice. Great. Okay. And so now, what's really nice is if I want to adjust anything about this, I don't have to adjust nine things. I can only adjust one. It's really, really handy and a good way to work. I do think I'm going to start this um, the start keyframes of trim path sooner so that we don't have these staying connected for so long. There we go. Lovely. All right, that wasn't too bad. I'm going to hit you to condense this down. Let's duplicate him. And gosh, let's see. I'm going to hide the burst one for the moment just so I can see what I'm doing. I'm not quite sure. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to move down the anchor point of this because I would like to I'm going to turn off snapping. I'd like to rotate it to be in between these guys which, if my math is correct, will be half of the 40 degrees we used over here, so let's just do 20. And this is just the standard ro rotation on the shape layer, nothing with repeater. So let's type in 20, oops, because I'm just, I want to go for the in-between of the other, um, the original burst. We turn this on, perfect. So we have that, let's move this over a frame, and let's turn down the stroke on this one, make it a little bit thinner. Okay, lovely. And another thing I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to hit G on my burst to select this point and move him. This is a little dangerous. I'm going to move him in, but now that I've rotated it, I can't just hold shift and move it down. So I'm going to rotate it back to zero, hit G, grab that point, move it down with holding shift so I know that it's perfectly in line and rotate him back to 20. Not bad. Let me shift him forward one more keyframe. Lovely. All right. So that really was just the base of my firework in Cover of Darkness. This, I think this sprite appeared every single time you would hit an enemy. And that was kind of the base. There was a couple other ones that I did, and one of which I'll show you. Um, another one is basically just the shooting star from another tutorial of mine. So I'm just going to quickly add on um, another secondary firework to this. So I'm going to turn these off quickly and then just do a circle. We're going to fill it. Let's do white to begin with. And then uh, no stroke on this guy. I'm going to hold down shift and command shift to make it a perfect circle, and then we're just going to make sure that he is centered. And I'm actually going to, I made him a little bit too big. Let's make him smaller, shift this down. We can be pretty small. And then raise him up. Let's add a, actually, yeah, let's add a repeater on him. Where are you? Right here. And then we will go down to our repeater options, copies, let's do let's do five for this one. Under the transform, we're again getting rid of the 100 position or X position. We are going to rotate this. Let's do um, 360 divided by five since we have five copies. And I see nothing. That means we should try adjusting our anchor point, which is right here. And that worked great. So let's go down to the content ellipse to fill. Let's keyframe that, go forward a few frames. We'll just match it up with this. And then we'll do another bright yellow. We'll see something like that. Go forward to wherever we want this to go to. Let's try something around here. And we'll do this same color. So now it's changing. Wonderful. I promise there's a plan for this. I'm going to turn these on for a reference. Oops. Move this. Okay. So now I'm going to cut him off, duplicate him. Okay. So with this one, we are going to make it a little bit bigger. So we're going to do seven copies for this one. 
and we are going to do 360 divided by 7. Wonderful. And then our anchor point is going to go farther down because we want this circle to be bigger. Let's do that. Move it up. But then we adjust our anchor point accordingly. I want this to be bigger. I may actually do more. Let's do nine copies. And remember from last time that it's 40. Lovely. Now let's duplicate again and bring down under contents, ellipse, repeater, copies. Let's do like 13's bad luck. Let's do 15. Under transform, we'll move our anchor point down farther. That might be okay. Oh, it might be okay. But let's also remember to do our rotation. We'll do 360 divided by 15. Great. Now you can actually see him. Move this up. Let's make him a little bigger with our anchor point moving down. Great. Let's see. And I think with this one, I'm going to, um, for the original ellipse, path. Let's make this a little smaller. How nice that we have that option and I can adjust all of those. Then I'll make this one, the in-between, a bit smaller as well. Just by little. So it's, you know, bigger in the middle. Okay. So then with all of these, which I again should have done this before I duplicated, but I'm terrible with that. I'll hit P with all of them selected with the position. Keyframe it and then just go to the end of it and move it down a little bit so that it looks like it's falling as things do. Well, maybe we do like that much. And I think we'll actually start out, we'll select the first keyframes, hit F9, and move that forward a little bit. We'll just say to like 60. Okay, I know we're not done yet. Another thing we need to do, which I again should have done before duplicating, was select all these, do scale, hit a keyframe just to have it. Let's do, let's try two. Um, keyframe again for 100, go back to the other one, zero. Ooh, not, no, 152, zero. Let's move this forward one, because we can't really see much from that. And then I'm going to shift these forward so they happen. Ooh, that's much too, much too quick. Shift these forward, I think I'm going to hit F9 because it's just happening a little too fast for my eyes to see. There we go. There we go. Okay. One more thing we are going to do is, let's see, I'm going to hit UU and that'll bring down any properties that you have adjusted, whether or not they're keyframed, which is great because I want to adjust the size of all of these which is still a little bit difficult to find, but it's easier. So the ellipse path, ellipse path size, we're gonna find, great. Now that we have it select, or now we have it keyframed, we can select all of our layers, hit U again. And then the size now is a keyframe, so it's gonna show up, it's a lot easier to see. So I'm gonna move to the right. Let's see, how do I wanna do this? Select all of them and move this down, move the size down, which apparently does not do all of them at once. Just learned that just now. And then let's just make this actually go down to zero for all of these so that it does fully disappear. So let's now take all of these. I'm going to move them out farther a little bit so we have more time in the air. Would also like position on all of these to match size change going down to zero. So now you know how to do a flat vector firework. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please comment below any questions you have or anything you liked or didn't like or any tutorials that you'd like to see next. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.